It's awesome to be back. You know, I have uh, kind of a fond two years of being here in Atlanta with the Falcons and enjoying my time. And, you know, I've had an interesting ride as far as the people I've been mentored by and where I've gone and from a pro style offense to being basically with a running quarterback with Jalen Hurts for a year to back to the NFL with Matt Ryan to now we're in this whole RPO world at Alabama and what we're doing there and um, it's been it's been an awesome it's been awesome but more importantly what's come out of it for me 20 years of doing this has been the more you do really well on offense, the harder you are to defend. And I think when, when people talk about Alabama football right now, they think RPO and slants. That's all we do, that's what we do. But the reality of it is that's a, that's a very small portion of what we do. And I think for all of us in the room, and I remember sitting here 20 years ago as a young coach trying to figure out my way and how I was going to do it. Well, you just find that one thing. You want that one thing. Well, that one thing is just a piece of all of this, right? There's a lot that goes into making us a very good offensive football team. And for every defensive coach in the room, it's like you can't just go into the game saying, I'm going to take away that because they still have all that. I mean, unless that's all they do, then, you, then it makes it really easy on them. So I wanted to get into our stuff and how we do what we do and why we do what we do. When you get into this, obviously RPOs, right? This is, this is when you think about Alabama, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is all they do, right? But there's a lot more to what we do, okay? So, but we're gonna get into it and how this builds. So really simple, like this is a simple, inside zone, man scheme on the backside. We're gonna read the Z receiver right here. If the strong safety's down, we're gonna throw it. If he's too high, right, we're trying to get a too high look, we're gonna run the football, right? Simplest form of what we do, right? But what I wanted to put on here was, this isn't just college football, this is happening in the NFL. We were, we were doing this with the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, that's Matt Ryan, that's Austin Hooper, that's Tevin Coleman, that's Calvin Ridley, and we're running the same play. So this isn't just, you know, I, I don't want to make this feel like, hey, he's just coming up here with a generic talk. We're running this play against the Carolina Plant Panthers with Luke Keekley and everybody. We're reading Mike Adams right here, and we're throwing a ball on first and 10 or second and 10, whatever it is, and getting a completion. <laughs> Okay, so I, I want to work myself through this. So here it comes again. We're doing the same thing. We can dress it up however we want. Okay, we're doing the same thing. Now they're rotating weak. We're getting the same look, and we're getting a free completion. Right? So RPO 101, simple, simple stuff, right? Here we are. This is Alabama a year ago. Same offense philosophically, right? There's the out route. There's the completion. They're going to play single safety. They're going to put one more in the box. We're going to throw a ball off of a leveraged corner who's playing high and inside and get a completion. Simple, like football, one-on-one, very easy. What we're doing, same thing. We're going to dress it up, okay? Single safety. We're going to take our out route. We're going to get our completion down here at the bottom. All right, well, what comes off of that now we want to give this Z receiver the opportunity to break to daylight. Okay, so a little different thought. I think a lot of people, when they watch us play, think we throw slants. We don't throw slants. We throw really glance routes. So he, he's going to fourth, out, fourth outside step, and he's breaking to daylight. So the, what I, why I say break to daylight is if it's man-to-man, -man, he has to win. If it's cover three, he's gonna get into the window. If it's cover two and it's a too high safety and you're trying to trap with your corner, we're gonna wrap that defender and get into that voided area. So we really give him an option to break to daylight. And I don't wanna make this too simplistic, but it is important to know. We're blocking on the backside right now, but at any point, 
we can put other routes on here on the backside. And the, and the hard part with this as an offensive coach and a guy who believes in running the football, I've never had a year calling plays in college football where we did not have a thousand yard rusher. So I believe in running the ball is if you give the quarterback too many options, all you do is throw the ball. Well, at some point, in my opinion, you lose the identity of your program and you lose the identity of physicality and toughness that this game is built upon. Like this is a physical sport. That's the truth, right? So we all want to throw it and it's fun, but a lot of times we put more blocking on our RPOs than most people would think, okay? But as we get into this, and here's the same looks now, same plays, we're running the same stuff, okay? There's single safety looks, now we're throwing the bender. Now he's breaking to daylight. There's Devontae Smith making his plays, just like we see him do every Saturday. Okay, so as we go through it, as you get into Atlanta now, this is Austin Hooper. He's at tight end for us two years ago, and we're running the exact same play with him running breaking to daylight. So for opportunities, in my opinion, RPOs are opportunity throws. And they give the quarterback an opportunity to get a free completion. An advantageous throw, right? So for us, sometimes it was using our tight end. Maybe he was the best player we had that we could create that matchup with to create that throw. Okay, so here we go again. Same throw opportunity. We're reading the safety. Safety wants to try to trigger. Boom. Simple stuff, right? You guys see it every week. I don't want to bore you with this stuff because I want to get into why we do what we do kind of now moving forward. One more shot of it here. Just taking the freebie, breaking the daylight throw. We have gotten more into signaling to that single receiver of route options, almost like you would in quick game, but now we're just totally doing it in RPO. So whether we're signaling the exact route, whether we're alerting to a, a specific route that you don't know what we're alerting to, this stuff definitely comes into play. And this is happening right here. There's Matt tapping his helmet. He's telling Calvin, Landon Collins is on the line of scrimmage. I want you to break to daylight. There's the throw. So Things like that definitely come into play in how we do it from an RPO standpoint. Like th this is a big deal for us, very big deal. All right, but to me, where we have made way more hay this year as an offense, we averaged eight yards of play at Alabama this year, has been the play pass with the illusion of RPO. Like to me, if I'm a defensive coordinator and I'm going into the game and I'm saying, I gotta stop the, I gotta stop the RPO. So I'm gonna have my whole low hole player. I gotta defend the run. I'm gonna worry about the quarterback. Are they a quarterback run team or not? We are not one. Well, now if all you're worried about, now your middle field safety's hanging at 10 yards, well, you better be able to cover a post route too. Like, that's a very big deal to us. If you watched us play it all this year, even if you watched our bowl game against Michigan, the first play of the game, we gave the illusion of an RPO, of that same break to daylight, had the safety trigger on Devontae Smith and hit Jerry Judy for an 85-yard touchdown. So to me, if you have levels to what you do in your RPO world, this is when the game really gets going and gets fun on offense. And I'm sorry for all you defensive guys, but this, everybody wants this to be an offensive sport right now. So when we get into this, like, so the same run, right? We had the same run up here. The tight end was leading through. We were running inside zone. Now my Z receiver is going to run a pressure post over the top. Now my H is going to run his deep cross. And now my X is going to...
going to run his 20 yard in. Okay, so all these things coming off of this is to say, I want the line, the tight end, the run. Running back, the quarterback, to make it look, feel, smell, sound like RPO. Like, I want everybody in the stadium to think, here comes another break to daylight. Here comes another out route. Here comes another slant. Well, we have a lot more to what we do than that, right? So we're going to take our shots down the field, doing it off the same way. Really simple stuff. Play pass. Okay. Now we get one-on-one -on, -one on the corner, and now we go take our shots and throw touchdowns. That's kind of the world we live in, right? We are not a running quarterback team. We will not ever be that way. We believe in, in throwing the football and protecting the quarterback. And I like to say, oh man, that only happens in college football. Well, this is a National Football League. Here comes our tight end. He's inserting for the backer who steps up. The safety, I mean, you tell me, does he think it's a run? And now we get to throw touchdown passes. So the, the whole idea to me is having an offense that you have layers to. And I'm going to keep trying to build on the layers as we're talking here because that's really important, right? Because we threw, we threw the same ball to Calvin breaking across or breaking out versus Carolina earlier in the year for, what, a nine-yard gain? But what did it set up? 70-yard touchdown, whatever this is, right? So... There's a, there's a, you had the method to the madness to what we're doing, right? To throw a 75 yard down, to 75 yard touchdown is totally worth it. All right, so we're going to keep going. So now we're in SEC championship game. And I believe in the system that we have here at Alabama. Obviously, you know, this is, I'm not even here this year and they're still running the same play. Now your safety wants to stay deep. Now here comes a deep crosser coming underneath it, okay, to make the play there. All right, so then we go to the National Football League. Same play. We're going to motion the tight end in. You're going to play us a man-to-man -man because you want to take away RPOs. We all get it. All right, now we get the deep crosser to Julio right here. Okay, so another concept we use off of the same idea. So now it's, all right. Cheat to the single receiver, okay? Well, now we're going to run two big posts, and now we're going to bring the single receiver back behind them on the opposite side. Again, attacking man-to-man, -man because my, our belief is if you play cover two, we're going to run the football anyway, and we're going to have success, all right? So if you're going to play man-to-man, -man, how are we going to beat you in man-to-man, -man, okay? to create explosive plays, because the game is about explosive plays. If you can't create explosive plays, it is really hard on offense. I don't care if it's in Little League or in the NFL. To put 10 to 12 plays together successfully in a row without one of your guys screwing it up is really hard to do. And I know we got great coaches in the room. I've been around great coaches. It is really hard to do. So how do we find explosive plays? So now we'll switch it up with double post, and now we'll bring Z on the crosser, okay? So now as we go through this here, there's the action. There goes our double post, okay? And now here comes the big cross. So it looks like to number four, He's running breaking to daylight, right? To the defense, it should look like we're just running an RPO with a break to daylight, and now he's running away from him, which is really important when you're coaching the receiver because as I'm leaning, as I'm leaning and I'm breaking to daylight, that's one thing. As I'm leaning and now I'm separating, you have to coach the separation. You have to trust these guys. Trust, run. Trust your speed. You're not going to get the ball out of your break. Run. Go get it across the field. This ball's not going to get completed until you hit opposite hash numbers, okay? So really cool look at it right here by Smitty again 
uh, and obviously Tua doing his thing. But that separation of making these two things look the same. Okay, so here we are in Atlanta. Here's Julio down here at the bottom. Okay, same idea. We're running like stretch read zone. Okay, like here comes RPO. And now here he comes across again on the big cross. Okay, we didn't execute it very well. Sanu's wrong. Okay, should be on top. But same idea. The DB is thinking, let me look in the backfield now because I want to play the ball. I want to go make a break on the ball at 12 to 15 yards, but that's not, what, that's not what's happening. Now this ball is getting completed 25 to 30 yards across the field. So you get that natural separation is why we do this the way we do it. Okay, another shot here. Okay, just the same idea. But again, I will say this about this play on wave. We do alert this post route versus man to man. So versus man to man, we alert it because of all the green grass that's over there. As the Z clears, we will alert that post route, okay? So this is a really good shot here by Tua of taking this, okay? Same game. This was the same game against Carolina. There's the same look. Here comes the insert by the, by the tight end. Backers are stepping up. Okay, they went out there trying to play three deep behind it. And again, there's your same shot coming in behind this thing. Okay, there's your double post. So tying those two things together. All right, so the next level of this is all right. You can't always throw an RPO. You can't always throw a play pass on first and 10. What are you going to do when you drop back and throw the football, right? What do you have to throw it again? Well, everybody wants to play man to man, right? You have to play man to man because in zone, your zone defenders get manipulated with all of the action, all of the action. Everybody's getting manipulated, right? Where, who's our key defender? Who are we reading? How are we going to read him? And like this stuff is crazy because I'm going to give a little history lesson here of kind of how I started in my profession and then got to where we are now. When I was at USC in the 2000s, we had Reggie Bush, Lendell White. We were running the ball. We were a play action pass team. I went to the University of Washington. Jake Locker was there, and they were the old school zone read, read the defensive end, quarterback run it operation. So, all right, well, I'll do that. I'll do that. I mean, I'll, I'll give him a chance. I, I don't want to change everything. Well, then we got this kid, Keith Price. And he was like a really good point guard in high school. Like an unbelievable point guard at St. John Bosco in California. But he wasn't a great runner. So we were like, how do we let him do what he does but still play? So we got into the RPO world and we started throwing these things and we started playing catch with different throws and, and whatnot. And then as you work your way through and you go to USC and you get Cody Kessler, you come to Alabama, you get Jalen Hurts, you go to the Atlanta Falcons, you have Matt Ryan, you go back to Alabama, you get to a tongue of Iloa. It's like, at what point is it about you or is it about your players? And I am, I'm a firm believer in our job, our responsibility is to do, put our players in the best position to be successful. And so this is where a lot of this stuff continues to come from. So as you get into the drop back world, 
we may call more of it with certain guys, right? I may call more of this with a Mac Jones as opposed to I would with a Tua Tonga of Iloa. Tua, very instinctual. He can make RPOs work. He's the best signaler I've ever been associated with. I mean, this guy will signal things that we didn't even practice, but he'll signal it and it works. Mac Jones, very detailed, very like A, B, C. So when you talk progression reads, like for us, this is a staple base concept that we run. If I know, hey, I'm going into the game and Dave Aranda or whoever, all these great guys, that, I mean, there's a lot of awesome coaches out here that are gonna play man-to-man -man versus us, we are gonna run a rub route on you. Okay, we are gonna run a rub route. We're gonna try to get a running back out one first. Okay, we're gonna try to pick with the Y. We're gonna try to pick with the Z. We're gonna try to pick with the H to get the X underneath on the move. Okay, the Z then, okay, when he sits down at 10 yards, if no one is attached, he'll stay there. If anyone's attached, he'll pull out, make his play. Okay, and the Y is sitting down on the backside. Not very elaborate. But that's what we do over and over and over again. And it's more so the formations, the motions, the shifts, how we get to them are what make it unique. But for me, it's about the quarterback and how can the quarterback play the best that he can play. And so we don't change concepts. I'm not gonna, out of the blue, tell the Z to run a post route right here. I will never do that to our guy. Our reads remain the same over and over and over. And the kids would be like, coach, if we just ran, I don't wanna hear it. It's not what we do. So railroad, is what we do. Like, if you watch us play, we will hit this minimum more than once a game. We hit it, we hit it in the Citrus Bowl. We hit uh, Jerry Judy out the back door. All right, so simple look. Again, short motion just to disguise some things a little bit. All right, running back is always one. Take him. This is true progression football. We are not reading coverages. It is true one, two, three, four, football. You don't get a choice. If one is open, throw it to them. All right, so there it is. Alabama running it, Damian Harris, the whole nine. All right, so we're gonna come back this Monday night football. We're gonna dress it up with Muhammad Sanu. Okay, there's Matt Ryan. There's Tevin Coleman. And I'm ripping Matt's right now already on the headset for being late, but there's number one. Give him the ball. Right there's your sit over the ball. There's your shallow sit, and we're coming through out the back door. All right, so here's Alabama versus Oklahoma. Short motion. Running back is one. Give him the ball. Perfect. All right. Here we are against the New Orleans Saints. We're going to motion the Y. Okay. Give us a little indicator, same idea, give them the ball. My opinion, the least defended player on the field in the pass game is the running back. So like this year, Najee Harris was our running back. He caught 30 something balls, seven touchdowns coming out of the backfield. If you watched LSU, right, which we all probably did, the national championship, their kid killed everyone catching the ball out of the backfield. So when you go to your drop back game, let's not neglect the running back and just think, hey, every time we gotta have six man protection and he's gotta block. Well, how about they better cover this guy? They better cover him. And it doesn't always have to be a flat route. Like, why does it have to be a flat route? Put him on a wheel, put him on a rail, do something with the guy so that he can make his plays and have opportunities down the field. Okay, so we're gonna keep going here. All right, 
So now I, I get it. Not everybody in the room, right? Not everybody in the room is a spread RPO coach, right? Some of you guys still use two tight ends. Like, raise your hand. Does anybody still use two tight ends? How many was that? Four? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Think about that. But every one of you defensive coaches, when you go to your first day of install, you're going to put base defense in, aren't you? Oh, we got to stop. We got to stop two back power. How about stop what the percentages tell you to defend? Right? So, anyway, all of this stuff we did in Atlanta carried over from two tight end sets and three wide receiver sets. So, this shot right here versus the Redskins is from under center. Just so I, I didn't want anyone in the room to feel like, well, I'm not getting anything from this guy because these plays don't apply to me because I'm a two tight end coach. Well, it, it works that way too. So you can still throw the ball from under your center. You can throw it to the back. They won't cover the guy. All right, another shot here. Okay, so now we're going to get through the progression, all right? We've worn you out. We've thrown it to the back. We've thrown it to the back. We've thrown it to the back. All right, so there comes our natural rub. Okay, here comes our crossers. Now we get this, this nice little triangle right here in the middle of the field, right? We're seeing this triangle. Go play catch. Okay, we got another one here coming. Okay, there's our natural triangle. Really should be flushing this out better than he is. All right, but there's a natural rub. We're hitting the ball underneath. We're getting vertical with it. Not everything has to be vertical, vertical, vertical. Okay, I will say I'm a firm believer. And sometimes people laugh at me. Not laugh, but they, they kind of like, well, never. I don't like throwing the ball to a stationary target. Because I'm as slow or I'm as fast as Julio Jones at that moment. I mean, I, let's get the guys catching the ball on the move, like catch the ball running. Let them do what they do, right? That's what they're best at. So the more times I can get him running, like that separation, I can't do that. I can't do that. But if I just had him sit down, uh, I got a pretty good chance of doing that. So on the move stuff, right? Because what am I thinking? You're trying to defend RPOs. How are you gonna defend RPOs? Play man to man. All right, if you're gonna play man to man, I'm gonna run away from you, whether it is down the field or on crossing routes, over and over and over again, right? But if we're not operating our RPOs very well, run game and pass game, then all this other stuff gets really hard on us, right? So we have to like build the layers as even as the game goes, we have to build the layers as we go. All right, so the next one here, I know I got a boogie. The next one here is really important too. Because one of the other options people do, in my opinion, to take away RPOs is they'll play cover two but they will trap the corner really hard, right? They're gonna say, we're gonna make them not let the indicator or the key defender in the RPO be the extra helmet to play in the run game, right? So what we tried to do is build a natural high-low into the boundary with crossers, with a little bit of a run action right here, Okay, so if you do try to trap us, we get the natural high-low. If you're still playing man, we do, get a, we do get a little bit of a mover on the run, but we have to account for you trapping that boundary corner. We have to. Now, I will say this year we've bought in more and our quarterbacks did even better of recognizing the trap coverage in RPOs and still throwing it, but it gets hard. I mean, offensive coaches, you guys in the room, you, you, you know, that, that, that's hard when they start taking that away, giving you a too high shell to do that. So as you get into it here, 
Just a natural progression, right? Natural stuff going on right here. True progression read, one, two read, okay? Plain catch into the boundary, okay? With a drive route coming. All right, so you go to Atlanta, same stuff here, into the boundary. Okay, now you're gonna get cover two. Now you get the natural high-low throw, play catch with it. Okay, you go back to Tennessee here. There's your natural high-low with a little bit of a switch release. Play catch with it. Okay. Same for everybody in the room with two tight ends. I still, yeah, I don't forget about you guys. Here's two tight ends. We're running the same deal. Okay, right up top. Play catch with it. Okay, Lambo in December, not fun. High low read, play catch with it. All right, one more shot of it here. Okay, now we're going to work ourselves through it. They take it away. They're going to play us in man now. Okay, so now in man, we want our crossers again. We want our natural rub. Okay, here it comes. Okay, and one more shot of that coming out the back door versus man to man. So for the quarterback, like on both of these concepts, we don't, we don't ever change. We don't, we don't change week to week. We don't go into the game saying, hey, this week we're going to do it this way. No, it is one, two, three, four, five football. Like that is how we play. We don't vary. We don't say, hey, we want to do it this way this week or... I, I, I don't, I don't know how kids can learn like that. Like, I'm just not a believer in them playing that way. And so this is kind of how we teach. We're an RPO team that runs the football if you're going to let us run the ball. And we will continue to run the ball. The moment you say we're going to take away the run, our system is built to throw RPOs. Okay. How do you take away an RPO? You take it away with leverage, in my opinion. You play man, you play with really hard inside leverage, you take away those throws. All right, so now, what do we do? Okay, we have to make you defend throws down the field. Okay, so we are gonna hard play past you and take our shots down the field. Okay, well, now you gotta block them a little longer, you gotta do those things a little longer. Do you have options for the quarterback to let the ball get out of his hands and play a little quicker. Now we're going to run crossers at you. Everybody is catching the ball on the move over and over and over. If you watch us play, we don't throw them. I don't even know if I called a curl route this year. Why would I? You call curl routes for cover three. How many defensive coordinators in here? Raise your hand. How often do you just call cover three nowadays? I mean, I, I, it's too easy because I can RPO you. Your defender has to react. I'm going to play catch every time. Every time. So... You have to be prepared to beat man to man and do it that way with people on the move. And in my opinion, your people on the move, you can create by putting your best players are the ones that are on the move to catch that ball to go create explosive plays. And so it kind of builds its way all the way through it. So when you talk about a progression passing game, our progression passing game starts, yeah, RPO. It goes to play pass, then it goes to drop back where we're reading one through five, but it is truly a progression of how we install it and how we go through it to get to where we are come game day. So what questions we got? Off play pass, you just call drop back protection. Here's what we do with play pass wise. This is a really good, this is a good point. 
So if you take any one of your runs, what we do, we can purple tag any run that we have. And literally we block the run. We block our run. So to the, to the defense, it should look and feel and smell and sound just like the run. The running back then has any secondary element. So that's worked really well for us. We do it off of both. We do it off of both gap and man schemes. The, the outside zone scheme is the hardest one to do because how are you going to handle the backside end? That's always the issue. But when you inside zone block it, generally you already have him accounted for, so you can make a purple tag. And the kids aren't learning something brand new. That's my assignment in the run. This is my assignment in the pass. So in 2000 and... 2000 and Two, I was in the dot-com sales world, and I got to become a GA at USC under Pete Carroll. And I think this is important because I'm sure there's a lot of young coaches trying to figure out how to get to where you want to get to. And I'm not where I want to get to for my own faults, you know. But you, I'm in sales, and I get this opportunity. On that staff is Lane Kiffin. All right, so we're on the staff together. I end up two years later going to the Oakland Raiders, um, 29. I'm coaching Rich Gannon, who's 39, with Norv Turner, which was an amazing experience. Two years later, Norm Chow leaves. I come back. Lane is still on staff. I get offered the Oakland Raiders head coaching job, which was like, insane to think and I turned it down Lane takes a job two years later after that I go to the Washington Huskies Lane is at Tennessee Lane goes to USC I end up Lane gets fired I end up at USC Lane is at Alabama I end up at Alabama in eight days, I'm an analyst, and next thing you know, I'm calling the national championship game against Clemson. I leave and I go to Atlanta. I come back, and a week ago, I'm talking to Mississippi State about being their head football coach, and Lane is at Ole Miss. So, point being, like, the connections in our profession are so critical. And I know everybody wants how do I get in? Like, how do I get in? How do I make it work? How, how do I, it's all, this is a people business we're in, guys. It's totally about the people. It's like, how do you connect with as many people as you can that you can count on, that they can count on you? How do you find the trust in there? Like, I mean, think about this. I've worked with Pete Carroll, Norv Turner, and Nick Saban crazy. I mean, I sit in staff meetings thinking like, I mean, he's talking to Coach Saban how he's going to defend this play, and I'm thinking, my ass are going to defend this play. We're going to get it right, and we're going to dial it up. We're, sure enough, he defends the play, and so you start thinking about all of the people you get to be around, and these things are critical because to me, when you come to a clinic, it is about what are you... What are you getting out of it? It's easy just to say, hey, I want to go to the clinic and drink a bunch of beer and hang out with my buddies. But what did you go home with? Right? So I, my story has been very unique. I've been fortunate enough to uh, been able to land back on my feet. I've been around great people. And um, 